When most people talk about the benefits of sunshine, they focus on vitamin D. Today I want to talk to you about many more benefits to sunshine, five benefits, the top five. And first I want to start with a disclaimer. Scientists oftentimes <laughs> present their information as if we know everything. They'll pretend that we have a complete grasp on the health benefits of sunshine, on vitamin D, etc. We don't. If you measure a person that's exposed to sunshine and a person that's not exposed to sunshine, and you look at their proteomics, the different proteins going around their blood, there's going to be thousands of differences between those two people. And I'm not even talking about the top 10 list here, I'm talking about the top five benefits of health. And so most of the time you're not presented with those thousands of pieces of data, you're just talking about the top 10, the top five, things like that. Just recognize there's a lot of additional benefits that we're not focused on, and we probably don't even know about. We're just barely scratching the surfaces in our knowledge and some of this stuff, and I, you need to recognize that. So let's start with vitamin D, and then branch out from there. Vitamin D is incredibly important for your health, particularly with COVID. 40 seems to be the cutoff number with COVID. These are American units. If you're in Canada, if you're in Europe, you have to do a unit conversion here, but uh, the average American is 30 on their vitamin D. And what's crazy is if you go to the doctor and you get a 30 on your vitamin D, most doctors will tell you that you're fine. That's because average Americans are 30. Most Americans are 30. Uh, but they've done studies on hunter-gathering tribes and everybody in those tribes is between basically 80 and 100 on their vitamin D. Now those guys have six packs, they have zero plaque in their arteries, they have zero plaque in their brains, they're phenomenally healthy, aside from some of the parasite issues sometimes. But what's crazy is if you go to the doctor and you get an 80 on your blood test on your vitamin D, many doctors in this country, in the US, they'll tell you that you're toxic. You have toxic levels of vitamin D and you need to bring it down. I don't think that's true, but I also think you at least want to be above 50, and yeah, you probably don't want to be too much above 100 on your vitamin D. It can start forming calcium in your arteries. Take your vitamin D with K2, but make sure you've got good levels of vitamin D. Sunshine converts cholesterol to vitamin D in your skin, so that's one benefit of sunshine. You can naturally get vitamin D from sunshine. You probably know that. Let's move on. Another benefit of sunshine that a lot of people don't realize is it helps break down something called bilirubin. Uh, some people even have a genetic issue. I think it's called UGT1. It's not particularly rare, but what happens is your body builds up more bilirubin than most people. And if it gets too high, it can lead to gallstones and then eventually you have to get surgery and have your gallbladder removed. And then for the rest of your life, whenever you want to eat something with fat in it, it's a process, it's a difficulty, it's a challenge. You have to do some supplements and things like that. So the sunshine helping you to break down bilirubin is an important aspect of sunshine for your health. Uh, number three, sunshine also helps break down toxins. And I know that word is a little taboo in scientific circles because scientists have laughed at this idea for a long time that we're sweating out toxins and all this, but the research is very clear that that indeed happens. And sunshine also breaks down toxins. A good example of that is tattoos. If you've got a bunch of tattoos, what they're doing is they're literally injecting heavy metals into your skin, into a certain layer of your skin. Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. Can I steal some ink? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes. So before we talk about how to get the ink out of the body, let's talk about what exactly you're putting into it. Most people don't realize this, but the bright colors in tattoo inks are actually created from compounds that mostly use heavy metals. You go to all these great links at a tattoo parlor to have a sterile field so no pathogens are transferred, but if you think about it, they're essentially making a very clean way for you to inject heavy metals into your body. And those heavy metals, they basically come in as little chunks. There's, there's little balls of heavy metals. And if you get enough sunshine, it'll disperse those balls, those chunks of heavy metals into smaller droplets, into smaller pieces of heavy metals. And those smaller pieces will basically be taken into your bloodstream and filtered out of your body and sunshine accelerates that process that's why people put sunscreen on their tattoos it's because if you don't the sunshine is going to accelerate the breakdown of those those particles of metals and fragment those particles and again 
accelerate the process of getting rid of them, which leads to fading of your tattoo uh, over the long term. That's what they're doing with laser removal of tattoos. They're hitting those heavy metal particles with laser light, laser beams that disperses them and breaks them into pieces and allows your body to clear them. It's not magically dissipating into the air. Your body still has to clear those heavy metals. So that's another benefit of sunshine. It's helping you to do that same process, whether it's something you're injecting into your skin or whether it's just other uh, trash underneath the surface of your cell. Your body is helping clear garbage or the sunshine is helping you break down and, and it helping your body, facilitating your body to clear garbage. So we've talked about vitamin D. We've talked about uh, bilirubin. We've talked about toxin breakdown and clearance in your body. The fourth thing I want to talk about in terms of sunshine and benefits of sunshine to your health is your mood. It improves everybody's mood. Some people in particular, they have a risk gene called PER3 and there's other ones called OPN4 and things like that. There's a lot of different genetic risks you can have for depression in the winter. It's called uh, seasonal affective disorder. And basically you have these receptors on your skin, period circadian regulator, this gene You've got it all over your skin, and when sunshine hits that, it literally impacts the way you feel, it impacts your mood. And again, some people are more disposed to this than others. And not only that, you're more disposed with age because with age, your genetic risks become more apparent. So you might have risks for heart disease. You're not going to get heart disease at age five, but you might start getting at age 20. You might get it at age 50. You might certainly be more higher risk at age 80. So your risk will go up. Similar with the seasonal affective disorder. A lot of times people, when I do DNA consults, they say, oh, I don't feel depressed in the winter. I don't notice anything because they're 20 year olds. When I talk to 50 year olds, they say, oh yeah, I definitely feel this. At least if they live in Minnesota where I live or if they live in Canada or something like that. Now, once you get down to a certain latitude, basically the sun is intense enough. You can get that, uh, you get those benefits from sunshine that literally improve your mood. The problem is the earth tilts each season. And if you live in the northern climate, even if you're getting outside, even if it's one of those 40, 50 degree days in the winter and you get outside and you get skin and all this, the sunshine is not very intense and it doesn't really do that much. So oftentimes you either have to fly down to Mexico or Florida or someplace like that, Arizona, and actually get sunshine for a week in the middle of January and February. And by the way, that really does reset people's moods and really helps. Or honestly, I'm a big fan of tanning beds. Not just these blue lights, I mean, some, they work a little bit, but actual tanning beds, actual UV is really beneficial. It really fixes people's moods. It solves people's depression in certain situations because it's actual UV. And you definitely don't want to get burned, of course. That's literally causing inflammation. It's causing chronic inflammation and more problems than you're solving. So you just go in there for like three minutes, five minutes. You just go in, you go out. People kind of think you're strange because you're... You're, the people at the front desk are like, you just got here, how come you're leaving? But you're not trying to get tanned. You're certainly not trying to get burned. But it, UV can improve your mood with whether UV, whether you have a personal UV lamp or you go to a tanning bed, but certainly going down south is also very effective. So your mood is important and sunshine improves your mood. Finally, the fifth benefit of sunshine for your health that I want to focus on is probably the most interesting. When you go out in the sunshine, your skin creates something called melanotan. And melanotan stimulates your melanocytes and makes you tan. It gets you tan. You can buy melanotan, which of course I've done in the past, and you can inject it. You can't take it as a pill because your stomach acid would destroy it. It's just a peptide. It's just a fragment of protein. So your stomach acid, just your, your body just perceives it as protein. But if you inject it, you get the benefits of melanotan. And I'm not suggesting you go and buy some and, and, and inject it. It's hard to learn how to inject and all this sort of thing. But a lot of bodybuilders use it. It's really an interesting thing. Again, just go out in the sun. You get tan. You get the same thing. It's very natural. It's not some patented drug. So, of course, drug companies don't like it. The doctors don't usually talk about it. They don't know anything about it. They're not educated on these natural things that our body has. They're more focused on the patented drugs that make the companies a lot of money. But melanotan, when I injected it, it was funny. I was in the middle of winter. And as you can see, I'm, I'm not injecting it right now and I don't generally do this. I do these as experiments, but I got tan for the whole month with three injections of melanotan. So it's kind of funny from that perspective, but what, what was really more interesting was I got super hungry and my metabolism went way up. I was burning calories like crazy. And that's through a receptor called MC4R. 
And a lot of people have genetic variants with this. So some people are higher responders, some people are lower responders to sunshine improving their metabolism. But across the board, most people have genes where sunshine improves their metabolism through this MC4R receptor. So that's a big benefit of sunshine. You're burning more calories, you're improving your metabolism. So get out in the sun, don't get burned, but don't let anybody, whether they perceiving whether you're perceiving them as professionals or whether you're perceiving them as somebody else, don't let anybody tell you that sunshine is bad for you. Put on tons of sunscreen. In other videos, of course, we'll talk about the dangers of sunscreen chemicals, uh, which are real and a real problem for a lot of people. And there's also, of course, good sunscreens out there. So I'm not saying, you know, never use sunscreen. There's good zinc quality sunscreens. Look at me. I'm a sunscreen user. If I go fishing, I set a timer, I get a 20 minutes of sun, and then I put the sun hat on, I put the sun gloves on, I put the sun shirt on, I've got like windbreaker pants that are white so I don't get too hot. I go crazy and block the sun. I recommend you do the same thing, but get the sun also.